Vision talk, man. Who the fuck we got in the building? Today? What's the word? It's Janae Moore, singer, songa, singer, songwriter, rapper from Chicago. Okay, cool. Man. So for the per- people first time tapping in, you know what I'm saying? What part of Chicago are you from? I'm from over east. I'm from Jeffrey Manor. Okay, cool. What is it like growing up out there? And shit? Uh, I mean, it's lit. Everybody look at Chicago a certain way. I've been living there my whole life, so I don't really look at it too bad. This yeah. shit normal. Yeah, it's a reality. But it's cool, yeah. No, that's what's up. I ain't gonna lie, I was definitely gonna ask because, you know, Chicago definitely got a perception about it. Shit. Yeah, you know, sometimes I get high and I'll be riding. Like, if I be real high, I'll be like, damn, this shit do look crazy. Like, I see why people be kind of scared because it looks crazy. Yeah. But shit, we so accustomed to it. It don't even matter no more. It's like we know. Did you uh, see a lot of violence growing up? Hmm? Did you see a lot of violence growing up? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. My brother, <laughs> shit, he was right there doing it all. <laughs> nah, yeah, I definitely seen a lot of violence growing up, but I don't really, I, I wasn't into that. You feel me? I'm, I'm strictly business. I'm not in the streets. I'm not no hood rat. I ain't got on none of that. How'd you like avoid that? Um. I went to college. Like I was, a, I was in school. Like I know, looking at my platform, you would think like. I was bad or whatever, but no. I, I was in college, I went to school to be a chef. Um, I got two degrees, culinary arts, hospitality management. Um, yeah, I got a full ride scholarship in New York, so. Yeah, I went out there for school. I was living out there for four years. That's what's up, you know, I was gonna say, I had seen you, um, got a catering business. I do got a catering business, I eat catering. So that's something I'm trying to focus on, but it's kind of hard to juggle that and being an artist at the same time. Um, Especially when you're independent. I don't have a team. I don't have management. Like, I make all the moves by myself. So, and as far with the, the catering, I got to do that shit myself, too. No help. So, it's like, how can I do this and be at the studio? Video shoots, like, interviews is kind of impossible. But my catering business deserves a lot of attention because I work so hard for it. So, it's like, as soon as I get to where I need to be with the music, I'm definitely going to tap in with that and focus on that a little more. Yeah, no, she there definitely was looking real good. <laughs> yeah, I definitely could cook. I should have brought you some if I know you knew about the catering, but yeah, I ain't throw down. I'm out here on vacation, so I ain't cooking this time, but for sure. So when you come to the rack, make sure you let me know so I can get you and your team together. For sure, man. Yeah, but back to growing up and shit, though, like, what, what type of kid would you say, like, you was in school? Um, in school, I was a good kid. I was always the pretty girl. And um, I went to school on the low end, so they wasn't really polished like I was, so naturally people would always hate on me, but it's like, you just gotta prove yourself one time, ain't nobody gonna fuck with you no more. Wait, but, so when you say the low end for like people that don't know what you Oh, mean. y'all don't know about this. So the low end is, I don't even know how to explain it. The low end is the low end, <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Huh? Yeah, it's like right before you get downtown, yeah, but. I wouldn't even be able to describe it. I have to show you on the map. Is it so. the trenches out there? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. All around. <laughs> All this shit, the trenches. Yeah. What you say? So you was out the way, like, was you, was you always doing music and shit? Yeah, I've been doing music since I was 16. I'm 26 now. So I started rapping. I literally woke up one morning. I'm like, I'm going to write this freestyle. I want to go to the studio and I want to record. So I told my OG and she was with it. Um, my brother used to do music before he got locked up. So that was really my reason for doing it. Um, he exposed me to it in the first place. He went about all of the equipment and shit. He was in the basement making songs. Like, and I real life heard it. I'm like, damn, this shit sound just like the shit on the radio. Young, but ain't know no better. I always wanted to be a singer. They said I wasn't good enough. So I'm like, okay, everybody can rap. And I went from there and I started rapping. But as soon as I started singing, it's over with. So the first song you wrote, that was a rap song or a singing song? The first song I wrote was, what was the first song I wrote? Was it that one? I think I did a feature first. I think, I, I actually, I did a song with Nixta first. I did a song with Nixta, and that was a singing song. And I did that when I was on crutches. I had just got hit by a car. So he came and brought all the equipment to my house. And literally, I'm on, on the crutches, like, in the corner, and I learned to record. That was my first time recording. I wrote that song. I was just dangling. They just came out of nowhere, like, 140 miles per hour and hit me. I broke my collarbone, my femur bone. I had a cracked sternum, a broken finger. Um, internal bleeding. Damn. Yeah. How long did it take to like recover from that? Um, I had to learn how to work walk again. I was in recovery probably about five months. Yeah, I was on bed rest for five months. Five months couldn't wash my own ass, literally. Uh, what, what age was this? Um, how old was I when I got hit by that car? Thirteen, going on fourteen. Maybe I was fourteen. Yeah, 
like so after yeah, around that, that. And you, you're doing music and shit and was you like looking at it like okay there's something you really want to do or was you still just playing with it at that time Honestly, I did a lot of playing, but when I was 16, I was super focused. But that was like the era when Chief Keef was out. Like, Keef around the same age as me. Like, his ass was in the clubs and shit, but me, I couldn't do that. Like, I couldn't get in no clubs to perform, and that's all we had. We had that, and we had YouTube. Like, I wasn't able to do nothing. So my hands was kind of tied with that. Um, then I ended up getting, flipping my kind to a ditch when I was 18. So... Man, how you do that? Just being goofy. Fucking semi truck ran me off the side of the road. Like, everybody think that shit was my fault, but I promise it wasn't. Like, he tried to take me out. So I ended up getting hit by, I ended up flipping my car into a ditch then. So I had to take another break from music. And I also was supposed to go away to college at that time. So I had to postpone going to college. So as soon as I started back walking, I ended up going to college. And I had to maintain a GPA. It was just a lot going on out there. Never went to the studio and there consistently down there. I went one time. And what college did you say you went to again? I went to Monroe College in New Rochelle, New York. Uh, okay, so what was, like, was that your first time, like, living out of Chicago? Mm hmm It was lit, though. I wanted to be on my own anyway. Like, since a youngin', like, as soon as I was old enough to get a job, I went and got a job. Like, I didn't want to be with my people. Like, so that right there, them telling me I got a full ride for free, I'm gone. I wish I could have focused more on music, but it was just more so work. Like, literally, it's like, this my plan B. If the music don't work out, I'm doing this shit for my OG so she could stop riding my ass. Can't nobody say that I ain't go do what I had to do. Yeah. So I went and finished that. What would you say was like the biggest difference going from like Chicago to New York? Um, the people. Everybody in New York kind of weird. <laughs> like they so obsessed with Chicago, like asking me dumb ass questions, like shit like that. Yeah. I hate like even talking to like, even the niggas out there, like even trying to like talk to one of the niggas, it's just not the same. Like they literally want to be like Chicago. It's just fluky. Same shit. Mm-hmm. So when you were saying, um, like when you made that first song, you was going to record it and shit, and your OG was with it and shit, did you end up like putting it out? I did. I shot a video for it and everything. And what was like the reception of it like? Shit, it got 60,000 views on the internet. <laughs> I was 16. I was lit. Like, that shit got 60,000 views. I don't even, and it was so long ago, I don't even remember the freestyle, the words. Like, it was crazy though. Like, it was crazy. And then from now, I, um... I recorded a song called Flexing on My Ex. Now, that was my hit single. It go like, <clears throat> it's clear I'm racked up, I'm sacked up, just flexing on my ex. I'm getting that, now you want me back, just flexing with my next. To break a band, no problem. I could do the most because I'm balling. Writing big checks like Bill Gates, you mad as hell, you been replaced. Now, them 16-year-old bars. I really did that shit. I shot a raw-ass video. I paid 600 for a video. Like, literally, if you pulled a video up, nobody in that time had a video with the quality I had. Nobody was shooting videos like that, like, at all. I was raw. Did you have a team behind you at that time, or were you just? Mm -mm. It was me, I had a manager, his name was Marcus. Uh, I, he, I'm not with him no more, but I still fuck with Marcus Heavy. So was you uh, working a job or anything at that time? Like, Always, always working, like, I always kept job. Two or three of the bitches. When I was doing music heavy, like around 18, I had three jobs. I was working at a park district. I was working at um, Chipotle. Well, so I, was, I was working at the ice cream shop. Like, okay, hell yeah, this shit costs. Like, no. and, and my OG and them used to, um, they used to give me like $50 to go outside and shit. Like that shit wasn't working. Like I had to just go get it myself. Same shit. So after that, that song went up with the 60K, like, what was your next drop? That's what I start fucking myself up. Accidents. Like, that, I dropped that song when I was 16. When I was 18, that's when I flipped that car mm -hmm. to the ditch. Like, it was over with after that. I tried, I did, but it wasn't consistent, so nobody was taking me serious, so. So was people asking, like, where you at? Like, where you dropping again? Like... Uh-huh. All the time. Like, I had real supporters. Like, I was all on, on the radio. I was getting booked at colleges, like, yeah. it was a time, like, I was really lit. <laughs> I can't believe I dropped the ball like that, but I just feel like everything happened for a reason. It was meant for me to make those mistakes, like, and learn from it, because right now I wouldn't be able to prosper like I am if it wasn't for that. Yeah. So when would you say, like, you picked the ball back up? When the pandemic started. Yeah, when the pandemic started, that's when I got real serious. I was in the studio every single day, like, sun up to sundown getting busy working 
And what, what was it that like pulled you back to the studio? Like? I just wasn't be without music. Like, I just was around having fun. I'm like, this shit is just goofy. Like, I'm a whole artist. Like, it, I wasn't doing enough and I seen people passing me up. Like, that's what it really was. Me seeing everybody passing me up and I'm like, I was here before y'all. Like, yeah. fuck y'all. Y'all not better than me. So that's when I'm like, okay, I got to get on my bullshit and I really got to do this. Nobody going to take me serious. I can't expect people to support me if I'm not doing this shit in their face. Like, who, who finna care about what you're doing if you dropping when you want to drop? Like, yeah. you're not taking this shit serious. Don't nobody want to invest in that? Like, and this shit costs a lot of bread, too. So it's like, nobody want to be giving up bread for video shoots and shit and this and that if you're not doing this shit for real. You just doing it because you want to do some shit. So when you got back into it, you just, you was taking care of that, all of that, like, by yourself, like studio time, videos, and all that shit? I pay for every single thing for my career by myself ever since I started being an artist. Like, my mama, this was something I wanted to do, so this wasn't nothing she had to pay for. Yeah, she helped me out, of course, because that's my OG, but video shit, like, that shit, $500. My mama wasn't paying for that. Like, outfits, like, I need to get people to pull up with cars, like, I'm looking at the videos that's on BET. I say, my shit got to look like that. Like, so I'm trying to get props. Shit took a lot, but I did it, though. Yeah. So when you, when you came back and started making music again, what would you say was the song that went up in this era of you? Um, me singing. Uh, I got a song called Make Me Mad. Um, it's an R&B song, and a lot of people fuck with it. I got a video for it. The video real subtle. Like, it's literally a beautiful video. Yeah. And... I love rapping, but a lot of people love me singing. Like, it's like, cause a lot of people can't sing and everybody can rap. That's what I've been hearing. But yeah, that's what really put me on. I ain't gonna lie, that's when people really start paying attention. Yeah, that's crazy that you say that. Cause when I was going through like all your music and shit, that was like my favorite. Make me so, mad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna ask you too, like describe your style. Cause like make me mad is a way different type of song than Demon Time. Right, so I got two different personalities. Like I live two different lives. So I got a demon time set and I got a emotional R and B giving Alicia Keys vibes. Bring them two together, you get Janelle more. I definitely could get on that, but this is me naturally. This is what I want to be. Didn't you say people didn't like you singing? Yeah, when I was younger and I started to first start singing, like gee, my parents, they was like, no, that shit don't sound good, like. I ain't gonna lie, the only person who was like, nah, you could do it is Nixta. Like, he the only one gave me a chance. He was like, nah, you could do it. Like, you got the voice. Like, you just practice the shit. Like, and then again, I was so young. Like, I was a baby. So it's like, my voice wasn't developed at all. So it took for me to get older and I really start practicing. I start writing songs. Like, anybody who started helping me with the music, like with singing, they, they kind of just fell away from me. Like, I eventually, you know, people start working together in the beginning, but then eventually, after a while, you on your own with this shit. You got to figure it out on your own. So doing vocal lessons, like vocal classes, getting that training, like I was doing all that. So shit, Now today, what would you say? Like, do you have a favorite? A favorite song? No, no, like just a favorite style, like between the two, like the singing and the rap. I be on that. I just love Demon Time. Like, <laughs> that's me. Like, I'm, I be on that. I don't know. I love singing, though, but it's just something about the rush I get out of that. Like, it just teed me up. Like, I love it. Like, I literally love this shit. Like, singing, it's more emotional, I would say. Like, yeah, I feel good on the stage singing, but when that demon time come on, it just hit different. I'm, fuck out my way, boy. Like, I'm too animated. Like, yeah. hey, shit, that's what's up. Who would you say, like, was some of your musical influences growing up? Um, my brother for sure. Yeah, my brother definitely was a big in influence to me. He had hella songs, like, and he did that shit right in the basement. Um, I always looked up to, um, like, Keisha Cole, Alicia Keys. Like I told you, I want to be a singer. So, like, all the singers, R&B. Um, my mom, I grew up listening to New Edition in the house, like, shit like that. Yeah. Mary J. Blige, that's what my OG had me listen to. So I kind of gravitated toward that, and I feel like that's why I wanted to sing so bad, because that shit just sounded beautiful to me. Out of like all your music, what would you say like what what song is best described to you? Um I got an unreleased song that best describes me, but a lot of people ain't heard that shit. Um, but I feel like the song that best describes me would probably be Make Me Mad. Make Me Mad, that was me, like yeah. 
and I was popping that shit in there. Like I had some shit to say, like you make me mad. <laughs> Something everybody could relate to. The bitches like, they into it, they nigga every day. Like even the niggas love it though. The niggas really love it though. I, I see niggas fucking with the arm be a little more than the bitches. Like niggas love it. Like yeah, a female that could sing is crazy. Like they they really be looking at me like, damn, like you could sing. Like. I could rap too, but it's it, I guess it's different. Yeah, that's because a lot of girls be, you know, like trying to rap now. So I was gonna ask you, like, how do you feel about the female rap scene? The female rap scene, I feel like everybody got their own little vibe going. Um, right now, they into this hard drill shit. Um, you know, shoot each other's face off and shit like that. Not me. I talk about getting money, getting niggas, like taking your nigga, like. I'm a boss, like, I do my own thing, I'm my own person, like, I really pop my shit. I'm not in tour with nobody, like, it ain't no smoke, but it could be that, like, so it ain't really shit for me to be on there, like, acting like I'm in tour with people, like, I ain't no, I ain't got no ops, like, I'm people pop, I guess. <laughs> I ain't got no fucking ops. I be chilling, like, I'm really raw, like, I'm cool. Anybody who come in contact with me, they fuck with me. I see you do a lot of uh, performances and shows and shit too. Like, what's your favorite part about performing? My favorite part about performing is um, the reaction I get from the crowd. Like, I know how to draw the reaction from people. Like, even if you don't, you don't heard a million motherfuckers perform tonight and they ass horrible. When I come up there, like, I'm gonna make it my business for y'all to listen to me. That's my favorite thing to say. Is I like for people to pay attention to me. Yeah. So then that make them turn around, like. It work every time, like a charm. But yeah, I love performing. I just, I, I love this shit. Like, I can't really put it no better way. Like, when that camera come on, I'm right there. If somebody tell me to spit, I'm finna spit. Like, I'm not scared of this shit. Like, if Jay-Z was right here right now, like, I'm not finna be shaking in front of this man. Like, I want this shit too bad. Yeah. Tell you shit, now that's what's up. And what would you say, like, what's something like people don't know about you type shit? Um, these bitches don't know a lot of shit about me. Cause bitches be hanging, so they don't know my business for real. But what's something that people don't really know about me? Like, it could be a hidden talent or... <laughs> Do I got a hidden talent? Shit. Um, I don't know, that's a hard question. Something, somebody, some, some shit that people don't know about me. I don't think it's nothing like... They need to man they fucking business. <laughs> nah, but I don't, I don't really have no hidden talent or nothing like, oh, I used to dance. Yes, I used to dance. I was on a dance team when I was a kid, like, doing the parades. Like, Chicago got, like, Chicago Juke. Like, I was a real, like, dancer. Like, I was one of the battlers. Like, I was battling bitches and shit. They used to pull me to the front. Like, yeah, today we be twerking and throwing ass, but I real life got the marches. Like, I know how to, I know how to do all that good shit. Like, I'm a real life <laughs> I really be dancing, but yeah, I, I used to do that shit. Like a lot of people don't know now, but if you know, you know. I used to be out here. I got videos on YouTube and the Bud Billing Parade and shit, dancing up King Drive and shit. You don't know what King Drive is, but I heard <laughs> yeah, the drive. Like it's a Bud Billing Parade every summer. All the dance teams they marching up that motherfucker. I was out there, hot as hell, getting it busting. <laughs> So let me ask you this, if the label came and gave you a million dollars right now, what would you do with it? Shit. I would say I'd go get a big feature, but fuck that. I'm finna shoot these videos, hella them. I'm finna record hella songs, like, and then I'ma get the features, like, really the shit that costs the most features really ain't shit. Motherfuckers gonna fuck with you off the shrimp, like, they make this shit up, like, People ain't paying the exact dollar for this shit, like, but you need to build yourself up your own brand. That's why I'm not paying nobody for no feature right now, because it's like, for a thousand dollars, I could accomplish so much. Like, I'm gonna just work my way up, you know? If I get a million dollars, it's definitely up, though. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what collabs do you have up? Um, a lot of Chicago artists. I don't have no um, collabs with no big names. Um, I got songs with my homie KD. Um, my homie Polly the Great. Um, I have an EP out um, that's featuring somebody named K Kilo. She a Chicago artist too. Um, that EP is is five songs, but it's just me and her on it. We did that together. So, um, um, my homie Boss Tay. I got songs with my brother T and F D Breeze. Um, my homie Devo. I could name name a lot. 
I, y'all can keep going down the line. <laughs> shit. It's a lot. Okay, now that's the Let the people know what you got coming and shit. So what I'm working on, um, I'm pushing Demon Time. So Demon Time is out right now on all platforms. Um, they need to follow me on Instagram if they ain't already following me. At Janamo underscore J-A-N-E-A-A-M-O-U-R underscore. Click the video link in bio to see the videos of Demon Time. We was turned in. I was looking good, of course. Um, um, I'm finna go crazy. I ain't gonna lie. By the end of this year, some shit gonna pop off. Like, I'm, I'm everywhere with it. Like you see, I'm in Atlanta right now. It wasn't even so much about the performance. I'm out here passing out flyers to people. Like, I'm out here talking to people. I had a performance Friday. I talked to every single person in that room before I performed. Like, and introduced myself and told them who I was and what I was here for. Yeah. Like, so when I got the performance, they was with it. Um, I'm really finna tee this shit up. Whether it's the singing or the rapping, like, I'm finna do both. Like, I... I'm not letting up. Like, I don't have no more time. Like, I'm, I'm done playing. Like, I'm done wasting my money on this shit. Like, paying for videos. You're not even getting the outcome because you're not doing the proper rollout. Like, I'm doing all this shit correct this time. Like, I, I feel like I dropped the ball. I feel like I missed my wave. And I beat myself up about that shit all the time. Like, I'm not supposed to be here right now. But, like I say, everything do happen for a reason. Like, all of this shit is in God's plan. So... It's the reason I'm sitting right here right now and I'm not somewhere else. Some shit could have went wrong. Like, I probably wasn't ready. Who fucking knows? But I'm here to take this shit over, okay? Next song I drop going to be some raw shit. I feel like I'm going to drop some R&B next. Um, but it's just kind of up in the air. Like I said, I'm independent, so I make all these decisions by myself. I could wake up tomorrow and say I'm going to drop. But spare the moment. People fuck with that. I, I noticed that me just randomly dropping versus me telling somebody, yeah, I'm dropping Friday, 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 come motherfuckers, ain't even yeah, reposting the shit. Best to just, drop that shit. just drop it, like, the little snippets I be dropping on Instagram, like, you got them posting this snippet. They done shared this shit so much. Once it do drop, they don't give a fuck about the song. They feel like they seen it already. Yeah. The human mind, we slow, like. Nah, With all that said, like, you know, the trials and tribulations of the shit, what would you say is the hardest part of, like, being an artist on the rise? The hardest part about being an artist on the rise is people um, not supporting um, the niggas. Like, I'm a female and I look good, so a lot of niggas like to play. Like, people, even people I feel like I need, like a, a raw ass producer or something, it's like, damn, I really need to work with you and your ass rubbing me the wrong way. Now your ass through. So now I can't even fuck with you. I gotta go elsewhere when I already knew that working with you would have put me in a better place or whatever the case is. Like, um, a lot of people don't take, take females seriously. Like, females really goofy. Like, just naturally we do dumb shit so a lot of people see a female they like yes yeah, just like all the other bitches out here rapping mm, but I'm, I'm definitely different from everybody like I got this shit in a chokehold I'm trying to tell you like I'm really finna do this shit like I, I literally dream about this shit like I see this shit every day like I'm willing to give every dollar that I have toward this because this is what I want I got be for sure. I ain't fucking around. I'm done fucking around. Like, I'm 26. I've been doing this shit too long. Like, I'm better than everybody. Literally. Don't get me start saying some names. I'm better than them. better than them? No, but they probably not even writing their stuff. I really write my stuff. Like, I know for a fact that bitches not writing their songs. Like, I really sit there and write my shit. Would you ever let somebody write for you? For sure. I'm actually working on that right now. Um, Cause a lot of people got different sounds. A lot of people actually been coming to me saying like, I got this song that I wrote, and I feel like it's for you. I ain't against it, cause shit, that's what that's what it's gonna be mainstream. I ain't finna be having time to write no songs. Yeah. We paying for that shit, and I'm going to record it. Simple. So let the people know where they can find you on all platforms and everything. Y'all can find me on Instagram at J A N E A A M O U R underscore. Um, Twitter at Janae Moore underscore as well. Um, TikTok, Janae Moore. My TikTok going up too. I've been working on my TikTok, so make sure y'all get in tune with the TikTok. Follow me on there. Um, I should been doing numbers now. I've been getting a little hashtag thing going. I'm kind of, I feel like I'm a little old now, so I don't really, I ain't with TikTok shit like the kids, but I'm getting that shit. Like, I'm getting it. Um, Facebook, uh, my Facebook, Janae Moore Music is the fan page. Go um, follow me on there. You get all updates there. Um, yeah, that's about it. For sure, man. Appreciate you coming through. I appreciate y'all having me. So hopefully when I come back, you feel me? I'm going to be mainstream. I'm speaking to existence. I will be mainstream. I'm coming back to fuck with you. I do appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate you tapping in. You know, I appreciate y'all um, even taking the time to look at some of my music based off what other people told y'all. So yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah, for sure.
Yeah, for sure, man. Vision talk. We out this motherfucker. Period.